Lars and James are assholes. But you gotta admit they're geniuses. Hey. It's difficult for me to show up in front of you like this today. Yeah, I had to do it, but I'm not really happy about it. Anyway, this'll do. Eight more songs, here comes part three, with a little bonus for you. Let's get to it. We're continuing with Sweet Amber from Saint Anger, that just rhymed. And like I said last time, James is now doing the tricking. And quick reminder, not tuning down for this. When the distortion kicks in the intro, the riff sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> But when the drums join in, your ears are corrected. One, two, three, four. Finishing St. Anger with one that I deeply love and covering very soon. The Unnamed Feeling. Same thing with the guitars. Also this time, timing is not so perfect. James is timed, surprisingly. Not a dig at Lars, but, you know, James is known for having extreme precision. Here's the wrong way. One, two, three, four. And then it even makes you hear the drums wrongly. One, two, three, four. Two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now, my friends, here comes your bonus. We're going back in time to a little known, unreleased Presidio album. This is like a Saint Anger demo. Only none of the songs actually made it to the final record. By the way, I'm doing a video on it soon. The song is called Unbridled, and you can see the band play it in a very laughable scene from the Some Kind of Monster documentary. This song is probably the most f***ed up song you'll ever hear. Like, there are two ways to hear this, but no one even knows which one is correct. I don't even know if this was intentional or Lars maybe wasn't concentrating at all. Check this out. One, two, three, four. done with St. Anger, and moving on to a highly, unbelievably underrated record that people just keep ignoring, and it kills me. Death Magnetic is one of the finest records I have ever heard. First we're taking BBS, Broken Beat, and Scarred. Remember what I said in part 2 about the kick, the bass drum, and us being used to hearing it on the first beat? Same thing here. The problem is, the wrong way is just too good and too catchy to be ignored. I'm talking about the very beginning of the song. It's crazy that the wrong way is catchier and sounds better than the right way. Maybe that's why we keep falling for it. One, two, three, four. By the way, I recently found something that helped me figure this one out. It's the isolated guitar part. Because that one was easier to get right, so it helped me get the original one right. The, full, the one with the full band. Moving on to Cyanide, and honestly, I have no explanation for this one. I'm sorry, but if you do, please help me. I'm talking about this part. <laughs> I have tried counting this one time after time after time and it never worked. But again, if you have any clue, please mention it down in the comments. Thank you in advance. Last song from DM is Suicide and Redemption and it's the bass intro. Don't blame Rob though. Again, it's Lars's fault. It's always Lars's fault. The tricking is caused by the location of every hit from Lars and James. They could have done it in a more conventional way like this. But, I'll remind you that Lars and James are geniuses, so they chose the hard way. 
Here's how it is. One, two, three, four. 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 Got it? All you have to do is focus on counting and you'll do just fine. Moving on to the latest record, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. First we're dealing with Moth into Flame. The confusion happens with the bass drum, the same bass drum bull One, two, three. <laughs> Like I said, concentrate on counting and I swear to god I know how tempting the bass drum can be, I know. Next is Halo on Fire, very beautiful song, very underrated. We got the part right before the first solo. I think this one is tricky because there's nothing between, there's no kick, or there's, there's basically nothing, there's no percussive instrument between the kick that's on the F sharp, the F sharp power chord, and the snare that's on the A. I used to follow the snare like it was starting a new bar until I found out that it wasn't. Once again, counting. And finishing the series with the song Man on Kind. I'm honestly not a big fan of this one, although I love the bass and guitar intro. The reason why I don't like it is the riff we're about to talk about. It's the weird verse riff, and I think it's one of the rare times, really rare times, that Metallica attempted to get proggy, but didn't do so well. The only thing confusing about this one is the time signature, and although Metallica has used unusual time signatures many times before, like on Blackened and Justice. This one is quite surprising because, let's be honest, the rest of the album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, is not proggy like Injustice for All. I'll check my information because I'm not sure what this time signature is, but I think it's 13 over 8. How to play a groove in 13. So basically it's going to be like this, count it off, and it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, mother ain't nobody playing grooves in 13, you can't get paid! Playing grooves in 13, ain't nobody gonna shake their booty. That's why you fucking broke. Play 4 4, motherfucker. And that's how you play a groove in 13. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching all three parts of Confusing Metallica Riffs. I apologize on behalf of Mr. Ulrich and Mr. Hetfield for all the brain damage you've suffered. Like this video, and if you want, subscribe to get all the cool stuff. Have fun, take care, and I'll see you very soon. That was totally weird for me. It's just real confusing. What are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do shit. You're just sitting here being a complete d